Hi, Spring fans. In this week's installment of Spring Tips, we're going to look at the uh, uh, we're going to continue our our look at the uh, nice features in Spring Five, in particular the uh, features around the new Spring WebFlux module, which is the reactive web tier uh, that sits adjacent to Spring MEC, but works on a uh, and supports a reactive runtime. Right, it's based on Project Reactor and, and it uh, surfaces that that API and that abstraction and that way of thinking about things all the way through to the uh, to the component model that you use. Now, some of it is very similar to what you may use uh, in Spring MEC, uh, what you might be associated or might, might be uh, uh, used to in, in Spring MEC, but some things are different because, of course, the nature of the paradigm is different. So uh, one thing that is different, and I think for the better, is, is how we can consume services, right? What, what, is, what an analog do we have uh, for the REST template in Spring WebFlux? And uh, similarly, how do we test, uh, you know, from the client-side perspective, uh, services. So, in order to demonstrate that, we're going to build a, a reactive application, uh, and the ac application will take advantage of the Spring WebFlux module, which of course is provided by Spring 5, which is due as a GA thing uh, by the summer. So, for now, we'll suffice ourselves, you know, satisfy ourselves to use um, the uh, Spring WebFlux module as supported in Spring Boot 2.0 snapshots. So, I'll bring in the reactive web support, and I'll hit generate, and uh, in our application, we're going to build a simple domain, you know, a very, very tri trivial domain. I don't want to spend too long on the actual service. I just want to have something with which uh, we can, uh, you know, play and, and, and uh, experiment, right? So here's our new service. And uh, I always forget this. So I'm going to bring in Lombok because I do have a, a simple entity that I, want to, that I want to create that, you know, it's tedious. So why, why write the code by hand? So say Lombok. Okay, now Lombok is a compile time uh, annotation processor. It's going to make it trivial for me to, uh, you know, build an entity that we can work with. I don't really need. I'm going to just create the client and the service in the same project. Naturally, in most examples, they would be in separate projects. But uh, what I want to demonstrate is the point, and not particularly how to spin up a new project on the Spring Initializer here. So we're going to have a service. Well, let's create a, a base project called Reactive. All right, we'll have a new service here and a new client okay and uh, in the service we're going to create a reactive service application so just a typical spring boot application spring boot application and uh, we're going to make this a rest controller and we'll uh, provide a public static void main string arguments callback array our method. We're going to say spring application dot run reactive service application dot class args. Good. Now there's our there's our uh, endpoint. Uh, there's our best basic REST controller. So far so good. Uh, we need something to you know to move around to talk about. So let's build an event. What is the event? Oh, just any kind of DTO, right? We don't care too much about the domain. So it's just a data. It's going to have a field, private long ID, and it'll have a date because why not, right? So there we go, there's our, our three fields, and uh, we should probably build an all argument constructor. Very good, now, the first endpoint, we'll just return a single event by its ID, right? So it'll be a mono, that is to say, a, a potentially infinite, uh, infinitely streamed or infinitely um, uh, valued uh, container object, uh, but that, that in this case only has one, right? So it's going to contain a uh, single event, event by ID, and the path variable will encode the ID. And we're not going to spend too much time on this, so we'll just say mono dot just, and we're just going to hard code a, a new event, right? So I don't even have an ID, I don't even have a database connected to this application because it's really not what we care about this time, right? We just want something to work with. So that's one use case, is how to get one particular ID. That's called a mono. It's got a zero or one value. Uh, and then the next case is we, we're going to revisit our uh, service and event discussion from a previous video. And uh, we'll create an endpoint that just returns re uh, records every second, right? So events, and it's going to be a flux. It's going to be a, a, a container that returns a potentially infinite number of values, right? So a flux of events, and uh, we don't want to generate actual events that are infinite, right? I don't want to call a database. I don't want to 
mine entropy. So I'll just create a, a continuous steady stream sort of uh, based on uh, the, the a scheduler, right? Every second I want to have a new flux. I want to have a new event rather. So to do that, I need to build a couple of events. I built a couple of fluxes. One uh, for the the events themselves, right? And this will just be easy because I'll build a stream, a, React, a Java 8 stream. And uh, in order to do that, I can use the stream.create method here, or generate rather. And the generate method takes a supplier and the supplier just expects me to return a value. So I can just hard code the uh, current time and the date. And there we go, that's my first one. And then the next one we want is a uh, duration flux, right? So we're gonna say, give us, uh, right, flex dot interval, duration dot of uh, seconds. And there we go, that's our uh, flux that will emit a new value uh, whenever the, you know, a new second has passed. And we want to merge these together. So we're going to say zip them together, event flux and uh, duration flux. And what we want to do is to map each one, map you know map the resulting uh, flux, which is going to have it's going to be a tuple. It's going to have a two parameters, so it's a tuple of two basically. Um, we're going to map the tuple t dot get t two. No, sorry, t one. And uh, we return it, right? So that's our, our value there. Now this could be a method reference. It's a little cleaner, I think, right? There we go. Very good. So there's our, our two service side events, uh, two service side endpoints rather. Uh, if we run this, we could we can confirm that everything's working by using the command line here. So let's see, curl HTTP localhost eighty eighty forward slash uh, events forward slash let's just say one. And now let's just try all of them. There we go. So as I as I re, as I make requests, I get a new value every second, sort of like a, a heartbeat or something like that, right? So now I want to build a client. Okay, class not found. Reactive client application. What was that? Was something already running? Let's kill that and run this. Oh, because IntelliJ is confused because I uh, obliterated the first client in here. So we'll just create it again. Run this one. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so that is working, right? Heartbeat uh, every second. And events forward slash 22, right? So that's working right now. In this case, we have two different... Uh, endpoints those are up and running let's build a client let's build an, a client to actually talk to our service um, let's exercise for example this uh, service end event stream so this is actually something that you couldn't really easily do with the react with the rest template before right so uh, it's nice that we can do this because we have a client that is able to deal with reactive sort of payloads in this case a particularly uh, long or perhaps never ending payload so we'll say reactive client application and uh, because I've taken the lazy path here to keep it simple, I've got to uh, remember to change the port on which we start this application. Otherwise, it's going to start on the same port as the uh, service since they're on the same node and they're, saving, they're sharing the same auto configuration. So we'll create a new Spring Boot application. Uh, okay. Reactive client application by class, args. And we say that the uh, builder, spring application builder, okay, properties, and we'll just pass in a single property here server dot port equals 80, 81, okay, as opposed to the default, which is a, uh, you know, 8080, which is what the service itself is running on. Now, with this, we have uh, ample room to build a client, so we need the Spring WebFlex client type. It's called the web client, and uh, you can initialize one, either an empty one like this, or one that's pre, uh, you know, primed and pointing to a particular service endpoint. So that's what we'll do here, uh, and then we can use that in our command line runner. So we can say command line runner uh, uh, demo, 
and we can inject our client accordingly. And what I want to do is I want to call that endpoint, that uh, service end event endpoint, and see the results. Now, again, think about what we had to do before with the REST template. The, mess, the, the REST template would get the payload and then pass it to a converter. Well, in this case, the, the payload was infinite. So we need uh, to be a little, a little bit more intelligent about how we handle the client, how we handle the results. Uh, and thankfully, that's mostly taken care of for us, right? If we uh, call an endpoint that returns a million records, Spring, the web, cl the web client won't, uh, won't flinch, right? So we can say client dot uh, get dot URI, and we're gonna say that we wanna get the events endpoint. Uh, we can say that the that we're accepting um, a particular type of data, right? So media type, text stream, media type, text event stream, okay? And then we'll say that when we make the actual request, so go ahead and issue the request. Uh, and then from there, we have to take the response, the CR, the client response, and tell uh, the web client how we want to convert it, you know, how which, what kind of uh, body we expect to come back. So we're, we're, what we want is a flux of event, right, dot class. And again, I'm sharing the same event from the service implementation here, but uh, in you know, in, in a proper system, you'd have two different types. You might even have a, a client side representation, a DTO or whatever, and you'd use that accordingly. So now I'm going to take the results. I'm going to consume the results. So I've got now events coming in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to write out, I'm going to acknowledge the fact that I've received an event, right? So EVT, and this naturally lends itself to a, uh, to a uh, method reference, okay? Now, of course, it's worth noting that we could have done a lot of other things here. Um, you know, we could have applied any of the operators that you'd expect from Flux and so on. We could have uh, specified a lot of the convenience uh, headers and, and, and cookies and things like that that we want in the request. So we have the ability to really change and, you know, uh, do interesting things with the uh, the request itself, and the client itself is not just limited to get and you know delete and head and all that stuff. You can also um, uh, contribute a filter, right, if you want, and that returns that returns a, a web client. So you can contribute a filter that get then gets applied to all subsequent calls. Uh, that's an ideal place, for example, to insert things like authentication and uh, you know gzip encoding or whatever you need to, right? You can do that there. So let's go ahead and run this web client example now. This is now going to run on port 8081. And if everything goes right, we should see on the console here um, the events being delivered from the service. Invalid source type. Where did I go wrong? Oh. String args. All right, now we're cooking. So there's our... Uh, heartbeat value, you know, every second we see a new value. Uh, so that's working, right? That, that certainly uh, is working as we expected, and that would continue ad infinitum, and it would never run out of memory, right? It, it's doing the right thing. It's going to load a certain amount, you know, in a page, uh, you know, render it, and then preload, and uh, and so on. But it doesn't load at all. It doesn't try and do, it doesn't wait till the very end to try and convert it, right? Okay, so that's our, our reactive client. Um, sometimes I don't want to actually use a client just to call to an, another service. Sometimes I just want to test my service uh, as though I were a client. I want to confirm that the service is working in terms of the way that a client would deal with it, right? So this is a pseudo integration test, and this is one of the very loved features about the uh, Spring MVC uh, modules, that you have the ability to, um, to sort of mock a client-side perspective, right, as you call that service. So I'm going to create a test here, and we'll demonstrate the web test client. Uh, that's new in the, the latest milestone of uh, Spring 5, okay? So we'll use the usual Spring Runner apparatus. So Spring Runner, and we're going to build ourselves a uh, web test client, okay? So private web test client, this.web test client equals web test client dot and we have a couple of options here we can bind our web test client to an actual server this is different from uh, the the mock MVC thing before right before you were always talking to the application context itself you can do the same thing here you can talk to the spring webflex machinery in the same application context uh, it'll you know it'll process and it'll route everything through the same 
components, but you're not actually connecting to a socket and sending a request. In this case, you can uh, if you bind to a server. And that might be, you know, may, might be very useful if you're trying to do integration tests in another project. Maybe you've got a sort of a, a longer suite of tests that run through actual endpoints, right? Um, you can bind to an application context, bind to a particular controller, so you can actually instantiate the uh, the controller here, the um, the reactive service application, and pass that in there as well. And then, of course, if you know about if you, if you've been following what we've been talking about in Spring and the Spring Five centric uh, Spring tips, then you know that there are functional reactive endpoints, and that uh, and the centerpiece of that API is a, a router function. So you can pass that in uh, here, and that actually has a you know that describes a a uh, catalog of different endpoints and routings. So let's see, let's try this one. This is new, so we'll do that. We'll say that we want to use a base URL or we can use a builder factory, but we'll just use a base URL of localhost 8080, okay? We'll build that. And with that, it's not hard to call a particular endpoint. So we can say this.webtestclient.get, looking very familiar, familiar here, right? This is very similar to what we did when we used the, the web client itself. And uh, we want to call an endpoint by a URL. So here we can just say events, let's say 42. And uh, then we can say that we want to accept JSON, right? So we can say application JSON. And uh, we can say that we want to actually then issue the request. And we can expect a uh, status to be, you know, either OK, it'll be 200 in this case, we expect. Uh, and then we can expect, um, well, we can assert all sorts of other things here as well, like the, the type of uh, payload that we should get back in the body of the response, any, the presence or non-presence of a particular header, etc. But uh, in this case, I think we have enough to go with. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like, right? So, and this... Very good, our test is green, everything's happy. Of course, we should confirm the negative by you know, seeing if, we're, uh, if we try and confirm that it's uh, erroring out by returning a 500, that uh, it should fail, right? So let's go ahead and start that up. And there we go. So our, our tests are blazing fast. We're not waiting for a whole uh, server to start up, or in this case, we've already got it running, but we wouldn't need to if we use the application context, for example. Um, and we get the ability to do pseudo integration tests. We can do a lot of these very, very quickly, right? And Spring WebFlex itself, of course, is um, very, very fast. So uh, in this installment, we've looked at uh, how to consume services using the web client and the web test client. Uh, we looked at uh, how this is similar to the REST template and to the mock MVC uh, sort of apparatus that you may be familiar with in Spring uh, MVC proper. And of course, that those components are still there, right? Uh, and it's also worth noting that you can use the web client uh, with, you know, non, you can use it with traditional sort of uh, non-reactive uh, uh, services. There's no reason you couldn't just use the web client in lieu of the REST template, for example, right? Uh, either way, you, you have your choice. So with that, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.